How about this for an opening play? Gary Rutledge drops back and hits Wayne Wheeler wide open at the ball 45. He's gone on an 80 yard touchdown. Bill Davis adds the extra point and Bama's up seven to nothing with just 14 seconds gone on the clock. After the kickoff, the balls from their 27, Haskell Standback gets five off right guard. Quarterback Condridge Holloway runs the attack for Tennessee. He hands to Bill Rutter right up the middle. John Kroll would roll low and Mike Raines hold him to just a yard. Third down, Holloway wants to pass, but the Bama rush is too much. Greg Montgomery sacks him for a loss of four. That brings up the first punt of the game. Neil Claybo gets it away for the balls. Willie Shelby gathers it in at the 26 for Alabama. Shelby comes to the near side. The balls knock the ball loose, and they think they have it, but the official rules Shelby down at the 36. Gary Rutledge starts at quarterback, runs the wishbone to the far side, but the balls drop Ellis Beck for only two. Next, Randy Billingsley on the toss to the near side for two more. Possession down for the tie. Rutledge takes the option left. The balls nearly take his head off, but he tosses to Billingsley and watch the good block by Beck. Randy is loose for 16 yards in Alabama first down at the Volunteer 44. For the third straight time, it's Billingsley who fumbles but recovers for a gain of three. Again, the option goes left. This time, Rutledge keeps for two yards. On third down, Wilbur Jackson gets the toss coming this way, gets a good block from Paul Spivey. Wilbur slips on the artificial turf, but he still gets eight yards and another first down. Next, it's Jackson staying inside for a gain of three. The wishbone goes left. Rutledge crosses the line, then pitches to Billingsley, and Randy gets five more down to the 23. Third and two, Rutledge runs the option left, keeps it himself for four, and a first down. Now back to Jackson. He follows Spivey and Billingsley for seven yards. Once more at the end of this one, looks like a fumble, but the ball's dead at the volunteer 12. Bama's in full view of the goal line now. Spivey moves the tide five yards closer. 72,000 roaring for a score. Jackson gets it. Wilbur goes off right tackle seven yards for the touchdown. Let's watch it again. Wilbur slashing in to climax a 64-yard drive, eating up nearly six minutes on the clock. Again, Bill Davis kicks the extra point, and Bama's out front 14 to nothing. The Tide's Greg Gant moves toward the ball, kicks it to the ball's Jerry Brown at the three yard line. He comes racing up field, gets by three Bama tacklers, but then Dick Turpin finally trips him up. The balls are in business at their own 33. On first down, the ball's offense continues to have problems. Stand back to the near side. Mike DuBose and Wayne Rhodes drop him for a loss of five. Holloway knows he needs yards, so he gets his first pass off, and it's a goodie to his tight end, Tommy West. The play is good for 42 yards. Ricky Davis pulls him down at the Bama 30. Back to the run for one play. Reigns, Lowe, and Montgomery stop Rudder for a yard. Coach Johnny Majors decides to take advantage of the Bama rush now. Holloway dumps the screen pass to John Yarborough. He picks up five more. Dubos and Rhodes on the tackle. Holloway wants to throw again, but he feels the Bama pressure. Scrambles for four and a first down before Crawl knocks him down at the 20. Stand back, can't find any room on the left side. Croyle and Skip Kabelius bang him down, no gain. Holloway to the air again, good protection. Pump fake, and then he hits Yarborough at the 10. With a nice spin move, he goes in for a touchdown. 
Balls goes 67 yards in seven plays and right at four minutes. Ricky Townsend's in to kick the extra point. It's Bama 14, UT 7 with 3.07 to go in the first quarter. Balls kick off. Townsend booting it to Shelby at the three. Willie comes to the near side, but the ball coverage comes slicing through to drop him at the 25. Rutledge brings the option this way. The balls hold him to just a yard. Not much on the other side either. David Page dumps Shelby for a yard loss. On third down, Rutledge going left. Toss to Shelby, but nothing's there. Bring it up fourth down and the first Bama punt of the afternoon. That comes from the foot of Gant. He booms at 46 yards to the balls. Brown, who manages only a yard on the return. From the 30, Holloway gives it to Stanback. Dubos and Wayne Hall make the stop, but Haskell has three. Holloway looks over the tied defense, then runs the option to the far side. The toss to Stanback. He races 19 yards to a first down. David McMakin and Chuck Strickland finally bring him down at the Bama 48. Last play of the first quarter, Holloway throws it to Rutter. He gets four, Dubos, Wayne Hall, and Mike Washington on the tackle. After one quarter, it's Bama 14, Tennessee 7. See with the ball to start the second quarter. Holloway moving near side, tosses to stand back. Washington hits him. It's a bumble, and Reigns pounces on the loose ball for Bama. Bryant goes with Richard Todd now at quarterback. He goes with the option to Calvin Culliver. He has nine to the 49. The balls rise up, though. Wilson catches Todd for a loss of one. So it's third down and two, and Mike Stock takes care of that, getting three to the Tennessee 49. Now Todd's ready for his first pass. Richard drops back, looks downfield to his tight end, George Pugh. Look at this terrific one-hand catch. Pugh gets 33 and a Bama first down at the Vol 16. Back to the ground game, Jackson muscles his way for a couple. Todd takes the option right again. He gets three more down to the UT 11. Next up, Todd fakes the handoff, drops back, and finds Shelby open at the two for Bama's third touchdown. Todd moves 60 yards in seven plays. On the replay, watch the Todd fake and watch Shelby have to fight his way through ball defenders headed toward the goal line. Bill Davis kicks it through and Bama's out front, 21 to seven. Now a good kickoff return can get you right back into the game and it's certainly true here as Gant kicks it to Stanley Morgan in the end zone. The speedy Morgan comes up field, veers to the far sideline. East of the 35, the 40, the 45. Looks like he might go all the way, but finally Spivey pushes a blocker into Morgan. That bumps him out of bounds at the Bama 39, a 61-yard return. Holloway wants to take advantage of good field position, so he's back and fires it to Tim Fitzpatrick. He gets 14, Strickland and King knock him out of bounds at the Bama 25. Now it's stand back at left tackle. Strickland, Crawl and Rhodes stop him after a gain of only one. Again, Holloway goes to the air. This time to stand back for 10 and another first down at the tied 14. But it's time for the Bama defense to stand up. Reigns and Montgomery stop Holloway for no gain. Ball quarterback tries to pass. Bama defense is on him. He scrambles. Croyle sacks him for a loss of one. On third down, Holloway's back again, but Reigns is there to force the pass, and Strickland's there to break it up at the five. From the shotgun, Tennessee going on fourth down. Lowe chases Holloway to the near side. He jumps at the line of scrimmage and overthrows Rudder at the back of the end zone. Bama takes over at the 15. 
And Todd runs the wishbone perfectly, getting six around right in. Now Stock up the middle, four yards and a first down at the 25. Todd wants to throw again, but the balls are rushing. Here comes David Poley to sack Richard, a loss of seven. From the 18, Culliver goes right up the middle for seven yards. It's third and 11. Todd drops back. He's looking long. The receiver is Johnny Sharpless. But Eddie Brown is on the spot for the ball. He intercepts at the 48. Sharpless grabs Brown, but he breaks free. And he has blockers in front of him. From behind, Shelby chases him down at the tied 39. We're back to the volunteer scramble. Holloway dashing around to get eight yards. David Watkins joins Washington and Rhodes on the tackle. After a five yard penalty, Holloway goes to the air. He hits Mitchell, grab it, but he drops it. Again, it's Condridge passing. This time he connects with Yarbrough for eight yards and a first down at the tie 27. Paul Carruthers is in at tailback and he picks up two. Dubos and Strickland knock him down. Holloway scrambles to pass again. He hits Fitzpatrick. The play works for 14 and a first down at the Bama 11. Carruthers takes it right up the middle for five. Dubos and Ricky Davis stop him at the six. Now Holloway scrambling again at left end. He gets around the end and goes six yards for the touchdown. It's a 38 yard drive and seven plays set up by the interception. Townsend's in to kick the extra point and the balls are closer. Those are the gals and guys from Knoxville, the Tennessee cheerleaders. Tennessee has just scored to make the 21-14 Alabama with 3.41 to go. First half, Tennessee Townsend kicking to Alabama. He's, oh, he's getting fired up. Did he slap <laughs> that baby? The old adrenaline is high on both sides and right here in the booth. Uh, Chris, I don't know if our viewers and listeners know that Coach Paul Bear Bryant a week ago gave $100,000 to a scholarship fund at the University of Alabama. You're kidding. He, no, he did that, truthfully. It's to go to needy students and preferably to the sons and daughters of former players that he coached. Well, I've always felt I was in a booth with very wealthy coaches. You may be. <laughs> Helen, that's just backwards. There's one in the field, though. <laughs> All right. Rutledge is back in a quarterback for Alabama, number 11 from the 21st down. Beck, the fullback. Veers off, hit very hard after a two yard gain by Eddie Wilson, who's had a great game. And I think, Chris, they've got their first team yes. backfield in the game again. It's that constant putting different men in that keeps them totally fresh for Alabama all of the game. They gained three on the play, Duffy. Uh, Bud, uh, do you think that that will uh, ensure Bear's job for another year or two? Well, he's uh, got the people a little bit dependent upon him, and that's a very difficult position for a coach to establish. <laughs> On a second and seven from the 23, it's Beck again carrying across the 25 as Alabama leads 21-14, three minutes to go, first half. America's fastest growing football bowl game, that's the Fiesta Bowl, the Western Athletic Conference bowl game played annually in Phoenix, Arizona. Now in its third season, the bowl has evolved into the WAC area's richest event with a sellout crowd of 51,000 who have viewed the highest scoring bowl games in history. Part of the Fiesta Bowl commitment is to help fight the nation's drug abuse problem. The bowl has currently contributed 30,000 to the NCAA to aid drug education. As Wilbur Jackson moves the ball to the 30, and it's beyond, is it? Yes, first down. He and made a great effort, Chris. Uh, he was really pretty well bottled up, but he just uh, wouldn't give up that first down. And, uh, Bud, we mentioned the Fiesta Bowl where they donate the money to the end of the CIA for drug abuse education. I, I can't think of a better uh, cause, and I think some of the other bowls should do the same thing. 
I think that uh, young people around the country are getting the proper information. Uh, the drug scene is a blind, blind alley, and if they know how blind it is early in the game, uh, they're not going to experiment with it and get caught. So we can only congratulate Bill Shover and his associates in Phoenix and the Fiesta Bowl for the job they're doing. Wayne Wheeler to the near side on a first and ten. Rutledge looking. Throwing long, it is Wheeler and Tennessee blew it. Had a chance to intercept their second pass. That's uh, like two outfielders going for the ball. They had it locked in all the way and couldn't decide which man, which man ought to take it. Intended for Wheeler. That's a, it was Murdick covering the That's a pass that shouldn't have been thrown, Chris. That shouldn't have been thrown, at least to that receiver. He was covered all the way. Watch it again. This is Wheeler coming down the field. It's Murdick and Brown covering him. The ball is high, and you can see that Brown had it timed perfectly. He was moving into the ball. Murdick was moving with the ball, and he wasn't able to quite hold it. Year after year, Tennessee is among the leaders as far as pass defense and pass interceptions. They read it very, very well. They move to the ball when it's in the air quickly. Now it's second down and 10 for Alabama. They lead 21-14. Near the end of the first half, Jackson carrying number 80. Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox, as a result of a special news conference, at halftime, we will switch our facilities to Washington, D.C., for a complete report. That's at halftime. That's one minute and 27 seconds from now. Right. Here you see third down conversions. Alabama three of five, Tennessee six of eight. Now it's third down and seven for the Tide. Billingsley, they didn't make it. Nice tackle by Eddie Wilson, and he is from Marietta, Georgia, number 54, and what a day he's having. Let's watch Eddie Wilson. Here he is, number 54. The option play, very well executed, strung out. When the pitch is made, Wilson turns, and he's got speed enough to be right there with Billingsley to make the tackle. Greg Gant, Alabama's second punt, as they lead 21-14, 45 seconds left. And Gant socks one, back to the six, taken by Eddie Brown. Look at that specialty team. A 59-yard punt. Where is Alabama's weakness, Chris? <laughs> great offense, great defense, oh, superior kicking. Speaking of strong points, take a look at your screen now, sports fans. Uh, Chuck and Andy uh, are really just uh, rating the cheerleaders, but uh, maybe we ought to have them include the drum majorettes. Well, include them, but I'll tell you one thing. I'd rate uh, Tennessee and Alabama uh, twirlers. Uh, one, two in the nation. They are strong. I've got to say something for your Purdue twins also, though, Chris. Well, the Golden Girl and the Silver Twins are pretty strong. 27 seconds left in the first half. Holloway on a keeper as uh, they trail by a touchdown and an extra point. Tennessee's just going to run out the clock. They're not going to gamble putting the ball in the air down on their own five or six yard line. You know, Alabama has produced some great all America uh, or rather Miss America contestants right there. It looks like Ann Fowler, a former uh, Miss America contestant. You know, this has really got it. Well, we hope you enjoyed the first half. We did. You'll see them a little bit later on, I hope. Plus a special report from ABC News from the nation's capital. And a reminder that here at halftime, it is Alabama 21. Tennessee 14 as you're watching another exclusive of ABC Sports recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. The Six Million Dollar Man premieres as a new monthly series tonight. Coming up today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, 5 o'clock Eastern and Pacific Times, 4 o'clock Central Time, the curious and continuing saga of Muhammad Ali. Ali in his 12-round unanimous decision victory over Rudy Lubbers of the Netherlands in Jakarta, Indonesia today. Ali in his last fight before January 28th of next year, the return go against Joe Frazier. And also, the controversial National 500 stock car race from Charlotte, North Carolina. All this coming to you today on ABC's Wide World of Sports.
The University of Tennessee was founded at Knoxville as a frontier college in 1794, two years before Tennessee became the nation's 16th state. It is the nation's 28th oldest institution of higher learning, and it was designated Tennessee's federal land-grant institution and state university shortly after the Civil War. In this dual role, the University of Tennessee has expanded from its Knoxville base to establish campuses in five localities throughout the state, and today is represented by major institutions in Knoxville, Memphis, Nashville, Chattanooga, and Martin. This statewide system today has a grand total of 41,000 students, making it the 16th largest university in the United States. The institution is a major research center, working on health problems such as cancer and in agriculture and the basic sciences. The University of Tennessee, Knoxville. And here we have their musical representatives coming out here. Dr. Julian is the director, and take a look at the twirlers that had that crescent-like shaped flag core, followed by the band itself. There you get a look at the trailers marching out proudly as their team has fought gallantly in the first half. They trail by only 21 to 14 with another half to go. We're not sure if technically we'll be able to switch to Washington for a special report on Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox's news conference, which was held today. But in the meantime, I know you won't object to listening to the music, watching the precision marching of the University of Tennessee band. This is the pride of the Southland Band. Twenty-five students from Knoxville. Carol from Knoxville, Tennessee. circles, fantastic formations by the Tennessee man. Dr. W.J. Julian, the director, has been at the University of Tennessee for 11 years. Uh, he and his staff have done a fantastic job to make this band nationally famous. It is a wonderful day in Birmingham, Alabama. 21-14 at halftime, Alabama leading.
Tide of the Southland Band performing at halftime at Legion Field in Birmingham where the Crimson Tide of Alabama lead the Volunteers of Tennessee 21-14. Still trying technically to go to Washington, D.C. for a special report on a special press conference as held by special prosecutor Archibald Cox. Meanwhile, this. There they go now into the concert formation. And the summer of 42, the main thing. to be proud of the pride of the south the university of tennessee band of the summer of 42 and here in 73 will be exiting on the tennessee waltz march Entertainment as Alabama leads Tennessee 21-14. When you're talking about racing, records, and performance, you've just got to be talking about... Monroe's done it all. 20 out of 21 winners at Indy. 18 consecutive USAC championships. The Baja 1000. And winners in all classes using shocks in major National Hot Rod Association events. So put a winner on your car. The world's energy. Alcoa thinks one of the best ways to conserve it is to recycle it. Every time you recycle an old aluminum can, you save 95% of the energy it took to make it the first time. That's right. It takes only 5% as much energy to make a new one from an old one. It's one way to help save the world's energy. Aluminum. Pass it on. 1973 74 is the 92nd championship year for the NCAA. And probably no title is more coveted than an NCAA crown. Almost 6,000 competitors from over 230 institutions have earned the right to be called NCAA champion in the history of the NCAA championship competition. Jack Nicholas, Mark Spitz, Arthur Ashe, Jim Ryan, Dan Gable, all NCAA champions. And this year will be the best ever. Over 8,000 competitors trying for an individual title or helping their school win a team championship. And now on the artificial turf, a fantastic musical organization following another, the Million Dollar Band, and to do the commentary. Bud Wilkinson and Duffy Doherty, gentlemen. A little bit different than being in the locker room at halftime. <laughs> but I'm getting to enjoy these bands. How about the girls? I like them too. I... <laughs> They're different. <laughs> Might have heard in the background, uh, the Million Dollar Band is going to play great music from the Academy Award winners, beginning with Conquest from the Captain of Castile.
moving into a horizontal arch formation centered for the majorette dance while the band plays man with a golden arm. Not too bad, Beth. <laughs> this Man. afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, the special Watergate prosecutor, Archibald Cox, held a news conference in Washington, D.C. For a report, we switch live to ABC News and David Schumacher. Good afternoon. It is a crisp football kind of a day in Washington, too, but the official part of the city has hardly noticed. Watergate Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox and President Nixon are locked in a struggle that could conceivably end with either man or both forced out of office. The President has decided not to release the Watergate tapes as ordered by two courts, but supply a summary instead. He has ordered Prosecutor Cox to make no further attempt in court to obtain the tapes. In a news conference that has just been concluded, Cox compared his position today with what happened five months ago when he and Attorney General Richardson went before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Court of Appeals and the District Court uh, to call what do they to want the me to attention do next? of one or the other, and I'm not sure yet which is correct, uh, the fact that the papers, documents, and other things subpoenaed uh, are being refused, uh, and that the order to deliver the tapes is subject to some particular reservations. Uh, is certainly not being satisfied, although I would also uh, add uh, that a summary is being offered and would express the opinion uh, that that was not adequate. Now, technically, uh, the first thing we have to be sure of is the mandate issues. Uh, the uh, second thing we have to decide uh, is which of the two courts has jurisdiction. I think the district court clearly has jurisdiction. Uh, I think that the Court of Appeals may also have jurisdiction, in which case I would have to make a choice whether to go to the seven-man tribunal uh, or to Judge Sirica. I One form of procedure would be to uh, seek an order to show cause uh, why the respondent uh, should not be adjudicated guilty of contempt. Uh, I think it may also be possible and perhaps might be preferable uh, to seek a further order uh, clarifying any possible doubt resulting from uh, the President's statement last night. Uh, we will have to make that kind of choice. Finally, Cox said even if the President should fire him, the court case seeking the tapes will continue anyway, pressed either by Chief Judge Sirica or the grand jury. This is David Schumacher in Washington, and now back to Chris Schenkel at the Alabama-Tennessee game in Birmingham, Alabama. 
Thank you, David Schumacher in Washington, D.C. as we return to Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. At halftime, Alabama leads Tennessee 21-14. The Alabama band concluding its halftime performance with being fronted by some strikingly good-looking young ladies, all students, to Exodus, of course, Patton. Tonight, you'll never walk alone. These will be the tunes that you'll be hearing as they move up and down the artificial turf here on a beautiful afternoon for one of the classic rivalries in sports, Alabama, Tennessee. gentlemen we're so glad we don't have to rank bands all the great ones we hear and see across the country but two great ones here today and we'll be back with that second half very very soon rider rents trucks all kinds of trucks gmc tractors trailers refrigerated trucks walk-ins stakes small chevy vans so if you need trucks for a day a month a year over two seconds Remember, Ryder rents trucks. Number 37, Bill Bay. Almost and anywhere you travel on business, you'll find a Holiday Inn close by. And in every major city, you have a choice of two or more. Chances are we can get you closer to your business. And that's important when people are depending on you. We can get you closer to your business. Holiday Inn, the most accommodating people in the world. If you've left your lights on for hours on end, there's a battery that's music to your ears. The Sears Die Hard, with extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Sold only at Sears. It's rare for the past, the present, and the future to be such dominant characteristics of an institution as they are at the University of Alabama. The capstone of Alabama's higher education is built on almost a century and a half of tradition. Statesmen, businessmen, and national leaders hold a unique affection for the state's senior institution, an affection built on generations of dedication to a school and an ideal. The vast oak-shaped campus houses many memories, many accomplishments. On such a foundation of the old South, the University of Alabama is helping build a new South, a new South not based on a national norm, but a new South which seeks to retain a quality of life while expanding the horizons for tomorrow's growth. The University of Alabama is people, teachers, students, workmen, and administrators, all caring, all involved in making today and tomorrow better times to live. And there he is, the Tennessee mascot, the blue tick coonhound, one of the great breeds for those hunters that love to search at night. And now Tennessee search for a touchdown as they take the opening of the second half kickoff in the end zone for a touchback, Stanley Morgan wisely downing it. And you look at the Tennessee men up front. Love, Johnson, Cohn, Eurobeck, Satterfield, Schaefer, and Gravitt. And in the backfield, it'll be a great athlete, Condridge Holloway at quarterback, number 7, 24, stand back, 81, Fitzpatrick, 36, Bill Rudder. So from the 20, Button Duffy, first down. I'm really concerned about uh, 
the stamina of Holloway. He's the key to Tennessee being solidly in the game, and uh, he's taken quite a beating in the first half. Yarbrough is in the backfield, number 17 instead of Fitzpatrick. And the Alabama defense is quickly in on Haskell's stand back, led by Mike DeBose. The score 14 to 21, and the Alabama statistics uh, dominating. But uh, these are two sensational defensive football teams, really. And we've had almost uh, 400 total yards gained, a very even game. Alabama, one touchdown ahead, and about that far ahead statistically. Now we have Tommy West, number 23, in the lineup on a second down and nine, just beyond the 20. 21 14, Alabama, Tennessee with the ball. That's what we mean about Holloway. Wayne Rhodes, the sophomore defensive back from Decatur, Georgia, making the tackle at the 19 or the and 29. That's what we mean too, Chris, about the price that he pays each time he carries the right. ball. They really do close on him. Let's watch low number 47 here. Great sophomore linebacker for Alabama, fighting through a block. And as Holloway turns up the field, low drives at him, but Holloway slips low, and then he really does get belted, as you can see. Terry Moore is in at fullback now on a third and one. It looks like it's enough for the Tennessee first down. Stand back, carried on the play, number 24. He just joined us. Alabama took the opening kickoff, the first snap from scrimmage, an 80-yard touchdown pass, Rutledge to Wheeler. Then they came back and drove 65 yards for another score. Then it was Tennessee going 67 yards to score. And then Todd, the number two quarterback for Alabama, hit Shelby for another touchdown. And then 39 yards in eight plays, Tennessee, so it's 21-14. From the 30, Holloway churns out across the 35, and Woodrow Lowe was there. Let's watch this fine linebacker, Lowe. Here he comes. He's the off linebacker. He has to come all the way across the field now. He sees the scrambling by Holloway. Holloway's been the key man in every key play so far for Tennessee. Here comes the flow of back, back again, and saves a long gainer. Holloway has completed 8 of 11 for 118 yards. He wants to throw now. The man is wide open. Wide open. And Mike Mitchell Kravitz. 64 yards, and now with an extra play, it'll be a tie game. Oh, they really fooled him on that one. 80 yard drive, 64 yard touchdown pass, Holloway to Kravitz from Nixon, Tennessee. Wow. Got, got a receiver that wide open. Uh, some quarterbacks have a tendency to hang the ball a little bit. But they don't want to miss the pass. Holloway just drilled it, and Gravitz didn't ever have to break stride. That had to be a mistake on the defensive uh, assignment there, bud. Townsend barefoots it. Tie game, 21 all. 12 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter in one of the great battles of college football. Great sound, Sam. Hey, man, if you want really great sound, General Electric's got it all together with these tape recorders. This baby's got a counter that shows you the spot you want to play back and how much tape is left. There's even a built-in mic. There's an FM AM radio with this number. Stereo 8-track tape player and FM stereo radio here. Great entertainment, get the greatest with GE tape recorders. Dig? The latest in tape recorders by General Electric, the great entertainer. Uh, well, I give 100% all the time. I believe that the game is played between those two white lines, and uh, after the game is over with, uh, I like to go in my locker room and feel like I can look in the mirror and say, well, I've given it all I got. That's why I like to use Brute, because it gives me 100%. It smells good. It stays with me a lot longer. Brute by Fabergé. After shave, after shower, after anything. On the field, I let my bat do the talking. Off the field, I let my Brute do the talking. <laughs> Tennessee in white and orange has just tied the score. 21 all, 12.40 to go, third quarter. The Volunteers kicking to the Crimson Tide now. Listen to this crowd. The 12-yard line fielded by Alabama. Coming up now to about the 25 is Mark Putnam. 
Watch Townsend. He's the barefooted kicker. He's got tape wrapped around it. He's a side wheeler, soccer type kick. Now this one he didn't catch quite the way he wanted to. He hit it a little bit high, and it was a driving, bouncing kick. That kind of stings a little, doesn't it, Duff? It sure does. It hurts. Tennessee down at one time, 14 7. Have now tied the score. Gary Rutledge, quarterbacks for Alabama. There he is. And you can bet that the volunteer defense, which has been tough on rushing all year, allowing a little over 90 yards per game, that time led by Poley and Wilson. Wishbone teams uh, like to make yardage, and that's Lindsey Nelson's daughter there uh, in the mascot uniform. But Wishbone teams, uh, the first down for them is always a very important play because they need to get ahead of the defense. Uh, Alabama not counting that 80 yard pass play on first down average 5.4 yards in the first half on first down snaps. All right second down and eight down from the 27. Here's Rettling. Wheeler is there. First down at the 44. John Murdick on a hard hit on number 82 Wayne Wheeler who caught the uh, touchdown pass that covered Wayne, 80 yards. Here's Wayne Wheeler now. He runs down. It's a simple out pattern. They have to respect his speed so he gets open. Makes a nice catch and a first down. And the Alabama Trollers. We hope you saw them at halftime with quite the midriffs. Gentlemen, keeps them cool. From the 44 now, first down, the score tied, 21 all, 11.34 to go, third quarter, Rutledge, Alabama. Jackson. Jackson, the midfield stripe. Carmichael. Making the play defensively. So it was about a six yard gain. It'll bring up a second down and four. Let's watch number 70 here, Pulliam. He's the defensive tackle for Tennessee. And he is really popped by Brown. And uh, they really stay with each other here. This is following through on your block. And it's also <laughs> trying to find them if you're playing defense. Now from the wishbone split in, second down and four. First down, Alabama. Randy Billingsley. That's one of my favorite plays, the inside belly, the second man through. But my favorite plays when they make yardage stuff. No, I like that, though. I like to fake it in the fullback and give it to a fast halfback. There you see Wheeler, Sprayberry, Patterson, Eckenrod, Rogers, Brown, and Pugh up front. Rutley, Jackson, Billingsley, and Spivey in the backfield, number 24, Spivey. Beck is not in there at the moment, but Bear Bryant has a lot of backs with which to work. Wayne Wheeler. Great end is to the far side of the field on a first and ten from the 36. Spivey, 24, carrying on the play. That may not look like a spectacular play, but it'll, they'll unpile and it'll be second and five. Very effective. That's also the key for sustaining a running attack. Make the yardage on first down, and now the defense is in a bind. They're in baseball terms. It's behind the hitter when it's second down and five. Joe Gallagher, well, a freshman, making the tackle, Duffy. Yes, and we're in four-down territory. Now we, the Alabamans, are. The spectators Sec in four-down territory. Second down. First down, Alabama. Wilbur Jackson. That was the inside belly again. I can't give any credit to the play. I have to give it all to Jackson on that effort, bud. Uh, Watts uh, had the safety rush or safety blitz on there. He did come through absolutely clean, but then he missed the tackle. We have an official's timeout here for the measurement to see if Bama has picked up another first down. Yeah, I was a little it's, early it's, in making it's, the call. It's obviously a short about a, a foot to 18 inches. All right. I don't know. No, it's by inches. Well, we're not going to quibble over half a foot. No, but I'm sorry I said it was the first thing. <laughs> I don't think you have anything to worry about. <laughs> They're going to make it. Harvard 7, Cornell 3 at halftime. And don't forget the Prudential College scoreboard, which follows our telecast. Merle Harmon and Dave Diles bringing you up to date on all the scores. Columbia trailing Yale. Princeton's coming alive. 28 to nothing against Colgate. Bitten Boston College, 14-6, second quarter. Penn State, 19, Syracuse, nothing, second quarter. Here the score is tied, 21 all. Third down in inches. First down. On Wide World of Sports today, Muhammad Ali and Rudy Lubers, 12-round heavyweight bout from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, plus the national 500 stock car race from Charlotte. 
Sports on Wide World, 5 Eastern and Pacific, 4 Central. Don't forget next Saturday on most of these stations, Notre Dame, Southern Cal from South Bend. That'll make your adrenaline flow just like this one. Oh, this is something, isn't it, bud? He had the ball, and then he dropped it. John Murdoch, who's been defensively uh, a giant today, stepped between Wayne Wheeler and Gary Rutledge, the Alabama quarterback. Ball is a little bit underthrown, and uh, he did have it for a moment, but couldn't quite find the handle. But that was a very dangerous pass to throw. He threw it all the way across the field, and it takes the defensive back only a matter of a second to cover five or six yards to get there. Second down and 10 now from the 22. Alabama with the ball. The score tied 21 all. A marker is down as tackles were made everywhere. There's great ball handling by the wishbone quarterback, Rutledge. Billingsley carried. Rutledge, who went left, was tackled, and we have a holding penalty against Alabama. That's the first major penalty in the game. There was only one penalty in the entire first half, uh, an offside by the University of Tennessee. So this is the second penalty and the first major penalty of the game. All right, there you see the referee. He is R.P. Williams, and I believe videotape our crack ABC crew have it for you. Let's take a look. This is the tight end, George Pugh, of Alabama. Let's watch him as he fires out here. And I think you can see him hooking that arm with his left arm. And uh, as he makes that hook, uh, the officials see it. And uh, that's the holding penalty costing the Crimson Tide 15 yards. And it brings the ball back to the 37, second down and 25. Great mirror of how Alabama fans feel as Wheeler is to the left, number 82. And Rutledge carries. Ooh, there is hard hitting on the artificial turf. Art Reynolds was there, number 55 from Cincinnati. That was good judgment by Rutledge. He's going to move the ball down in there, and if they're short on this next down, they'll try a field goal. They were out of field goal range, but now they're back in field goal range again. Third down and 15. The ball at the 27. The score is tied 21 all. If you just joined us, Alabama scoring quickly. Tennessee coming back with a touchdown. Then Alabama, then Tennessee. And Tennessee here in the first series after the second half kickoff went 80 yards in five plays, a 64 yard touchdown play. Alabama with the ball. Spivey out of bounds at the 19. That was an option away from the slot, away from the strength of the formation. They ran it to the fullback, and it picked up quite a bit of yardage, just a little bit short of a first down. He's got remarkable speed. In fact, all of these Alabama backs do, and they keep them all fresh. They just keep coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. Steve Poole, who was in on the play, was shaken up with the line of scrimmage at the 19, the third member of the Davis family. Yeah, Bill right. Davis took try. Rutledge holding, plus the 10 of the end zone where the goalposts are situated. On the end line, it is 36 yards. It is up. No good. Tennessee takes over with the score tied 21 all. So Alabama that started a drive on the 25 have it falter at the 19 on a missed 36 yard field goal. It's 21 all. There's a very serious energy shortage facing this nation. We must find new oil reserves in our country to help meet our increasing oil needs. But we must find these new reserves without upsetting the harmony of nature. If you'd all gather around, We'd like to talk with you. At Texaco, a special task force, the Texaco Environmental Protection Department, helps guide the company's continuing efforts to help protect the earth, the air, and the water. For years, it has been Texaco's policy, when developing an oil field in the forest, to observe every available precaution so as not to permanently disturb the forest or its wildlife. We know about natural resources. We know how precious they are. After all, a natural resource, oil, is vital to our energy needs. We're working to keep your trust. Not only one of the most 
successful but one of the most resourceful coaches Bear Bryant with a big fan behind the Alabama team bench to keep them cool on a warm afternoon in Birmingham. Score tied 21 all after a missed field goal. Tennessee has it first and 10 at the 20. And Condridge Holloway who handed off to stand back has thrown 12 times today completing nine 182 yards and two touchdowns and but in that last drive there's a penalty that was costly. You normally uh, classify uh, intercepted passes fumbles assignment mistakes as errors but that major penalty 15 yards is about the worst error that a team can commit. Uh, Bama had the momentum going and probably would have scored had they not had that error. Holloway, number seven, who is from Huntsville, Alabama, quarterbacking Tennessee. On, 21 all. Stanley Morgan, 21, is to the far side. Second and five, markers everywhere. Penalty flags. I've been worrying about that delay of the game right yes. from the start. He's been checking signals at the line of scrimmage as Alabama jumps their defense, and it takes a little while to do it, and that time it took too long. R.P. Williams is a referee. Cliff Norvell, the umpire, Ed Copeland, the linesman, Paul Sprayberry, the field judge, Bill Tease, the back judge, and James Harper, the clock operator. Holloway's been involved in every crucial key successful play that Tennessee has operated in today. Okay, Duffy, second and ten following the penalty. Oh, I'll tell you, Stanley Morgan was on the move, but the pass was a little long. That is known as a long, incomplete forward pass. I think he was open too. Uh, Holloway uh, just uh, had a little too much on the ball. The ball in the air, 45 yards. Holloway once turned down a Montreal professional baseball bonus to stay at Tennessee and play football. He missed spring practice to play with the Tennessee baseball team. And here he is pitching football. He has tied the score 21 all, and there he is again. Short. Intended for Emmon Love of Oak Ridge, Tennessee, a senior. It's two bad, two poorly thrown passes in a row by Holloway. He hasn't done that all day long. I don't know whether he's beginning to get a little bit tired, Duff, uh, or whether he's just a little bit over anxious, but uh, certainly uh, he didn't look to be the same quarterback in that series as he has previously. I think he'll come back, however, in the next series. This is the only, the second time that Tennessee has punted this afternoon. Neil Clayball, very fine punter, into a slight wind. Lost his footing and didn't get the effectiveness he wanted. In fact, it's inside the 40. Now taking a Tennessee bounce. Then an Alabama bounce. It's dead about at the 35, but it did go 44 yards, which isn't bad. And that's a good number. Let's watch him. Uh, same number as his, the kicker's number here. <laughs> and as he goes for the ball, his feet go out from under him. But uh, he did hit it. That looked like Charlie Brown. <laughs> Where was Snoopy? He's on the near sideline. The blue tick two now. The Tennessee mascot. All right, Alabama has the ball now at its own 35, and the score is tied 21 all. Gary Rutledge is the quarterback, and the wishbone stays on the ground or a yard or two and you can feel the tension building and building as this game has gone into from a 21 to 21 tie let's take a look at Tennessee's Mike Smith number 75 reading perfectly here and he almost missed the fullback but he saw him get the ball reached and made the tackle there's another reserve Culliver carrying but Bears sending in the backs so a second down and eight Three-yard gain by Willie Shelby, who uh, scored the last touchdown, I believe, for Alabama. This big play for Alabama. They've moved the ball almost uh, with total authority and consistency all afternoon. Uh, Coach Bryan has great confidence in the second string backfield. He's, he can, continues to play a lot of men, bud. Uh, I would have, too. They're all averaging over five yards a try. All right, Johnny Sharpless, 16 to the near side on a third and five from their own 40. Alabama with the ball, score tied. First down, Crimson Tide, Juan Dyer of Florence, Alabama. Cut it. Very fine execution. You know, this is Dyer, the, the tight end, is a great running fake on the play. Rutledge faking the backfield as Dyer goes out, and it was just a little jump pass. It was the fake, not the route that got him open. First and 10 now at the Tennessee 45. The score tied 21 all, 4.43 to go, third quarter. 
Willie Shelby carrying on the play. That's our favorite play, the inside belly, four yards. And Michigan uh, moving ahead, uh, 21 to nothing in the second quarter over Wisconsin. I may up. move them into my top five next week, bud. That yeah, game's not over yet. <laughs> second down and about six. You know, Redledge does such a great job at faking from the wishbone quarterback position that almost every time a, a back carries the ball, he gets tackled. He does a great job with his eyes, too, Chris. The key to successful faking is to look at the man you fake to when you've got the ball yourself and then never to look at him if you've given him the ball. There he is, Gary Rutledge, a junior. Here's a crucial play. They're still not in fourth four down territory. They need four yards. They did not get it. And John Murdick, gentlemen, again and on the tackle, a junior cornerback. Murdick is not very big, 5'11", 170, but he's a hitter. And it's up to you two to choose a Chevrolet offensive and defensive player of the game for that $1,000 scholarship award to the school that the two players represent. Well, in most of our games this, thus far, Chris, I think that we've known who those players were by this point in the contest, but today I sure can't tell. At least up to now. Now from midfield, Greg Gant's punt is high in the air at Legion Field in Birmingham. The All-American City. And there are some All-Americans on the football field. Believe me, as we have a tie score, 21 all with 2.54 to go third quarter. History will record that it appeared late in the year 1973. It came to lead the people out of the land of the ordinary car. It came, they will say, with the eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the face of a laguna. The people came with it. They were carried in swivel bucket seats, surrounded everyone by things pleasing to the eye and to the ear and to the touch. And they moved. the 1974 Chevelle Laguna Type S3 by Chevrolet. The time is now. Come with us. On the left, coach of the year twice in the houndstooth Bear Bryant hat, a man who's taken Alabama to 14 consecutive bowl games. And on the right, a former player, Bill Battle, who coaches Tennessee. They now have the ball, first and 10 at the 20. Score tied, and there's a six-yard pop. First time that they've used a very quick counter. This game, uh, football is always a physical contest, and uh, the team that wins physically uh, usually wins on the scoreboard, and we're getting that kind of a finish here as we've got two minutes and 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. The best conditioned team is going to have any advantage. They've made Alabama so conscious of Holloway that now they've opened up the middle a little bit. And needing four yards, and it appears that Tennessee's ground game has picked up a first down right. That used to be one of the uh, axioms of quarterback. You know, the play works, come right back with it until they stop it. And uh, Holloway didn't even put a, another play in. He ran the same play twice. See the Tennessee offense on the right. That was Bill Rudder, who carried both times for a 12-yard gain. First and 10 from the 32. Rudder's 36. This time it was stand back 24. And uh, number 72 of Alabama is Skip Kabilis of Morrow, Georgia, 6'5, 251. Tyrone King in on the tackle. There's an end zone shot at Legion Field. It's been a sellout for months. It's been worth waiting for. Oh, yes. Second down and nine. Holloway, Wayne Hall, coming in, joined by 54, Mike DeBose. Uh, Bud, Holloway amazes me more and more as the game progresses. 
Uh, the average quarterback would have lost a few yards on that play. He's so remarkably quick, and uh, when a tackler approaches him, he seems to have that ability to just fade uh, and kind of slip every tackle. You just don't get a good straight-ahead pop at him ever. Tennessee with an 11-game win streak going for them. Undefeated this year, five straight. On a third and seven, Holloway to Mitchell Gravitt, incomplete. Fourth and seven coming up. And Gravitt uh, was open. I think that he was trying to run before he caught the ball. It was, let's take a look at it here and uh, see if he does take his eyes off it. The fake was to the top of the screen. Gravitt looking downfield, then he runs a little turn out. The pass comes all the way across the field. It is low. It looked like he had his eyes on it all the way, but he just didn't hold it. Now Neil Clavo hunting for the Tennessee Volunteers from Knoxville. Shelby is deep. Shelby looking at the ball, taking a Tennessee bounce. Tennessee will try to down it. They do at about the one. What a weapon. The punt becomes 62 yards, and Alabama now will be facing the quick and hard-hitting Tennessee defense. The spot was the four. That's where the referee placed it. Mike Caldwell, you see him coming to the near sideline, number 79, who downed it. And he is from Birmingham playing for Tennessee. And Tennessee has punted the ball three times. Their net yardage, that's not counting returns, is 38-44-62. Rutledge calling signals. Good run by Wilbur Jackson. They needed it right there from the four-yard line, Duffy, out to about the 11. And uh, the man that you see on the screen uh, would be a big, big loss. That's Urebeck, the great senior center. He's the anchor of the Tennessee line, and it looks as though he did get a leg on that play. I don't know what kind of an injury, but the way he's holding it, it looks like a knee. Right knee. Second down and three now for Alabama at about the 11, their own. Score tied, 21 all. First down, Crimson Tide, Billingsley carrying. That's that good old reliable inside belly. Second man through, good for a first down. We have a cliffhanger here. Bear Bryant, Alabama, 36. 134 victories as head coach here. Overall, 225. We'll be back in a minute. The radial tire. Before you buy one, you should know they're not all the same. Some of them have a polyester cord body to soak up the shocks. And some have tough double steel belts for extra strength. And some have a computer designed tread pattern to hold in the wet. And some have special outside grooves for precise cornering. And some have steel sidewall stabilizers for positive control. But of all the radials made today, only Goodyear has them all. Before you buy a radial, look at the Goodyear Custom Steel Guard, the radial with these five guards to help protect you five ways. Steel Guard, only from Goodyear. Watch The President's Plane is Missing, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central. As we look at the Tennessee cheerleaders, you're back their offensive center who injured a right knee. It appears now, after diagnosis, that he will be back in the ball game. Right now, he can rest it because the Alabama offense has it. First and 10, and the ball is at the 17 with the score tied. What a game. Start of the fourth and final quarter. Randy Billingsley out to the 26 short by about a yard and a half of the first down. Art Reynolds on the tackle. Reynolds is the middle linebacker. There he fights off the block very well and almost overran the play but had balance enough to come back and make the tackle. 
about all the color and excitement of college football and what a way to spend an autumn afternoon. Well, you are so right. Second and one now, Alabama, score tied 21 all Jackson. A face to face stop. Wilbur Jackson being met by Eddie Brown. That's an old fashioned play. It was a sweep, just a handoff. The statistics show Alabama leading all the way. They're not quite up to Tennessee in passing, but they are in total yardage. They're in offensive plays, and they've had the ball uh, seven minutes uh, longer. And this is really a great game, as we've mentioned. Almost 600 yards total offense against two great defensive teams. 42 total points. Jackson again. Look at that desire. Eddie Brown again feeling the wrath of Wilbur Jackson, the senior from Ozark, Alabama. Another Crimson Tide first down. Hey, Chris, guess what that play was? An inside belly. And that uh, note on your screen indicates the number of people that Alabama plays and the freshness in the fourth quarter that they have together with the finesse power there. A team that comes down the stretch with great strength. And on three plays, they've moved it from the 17 to the 48 on the ground. Oh, and did he have possession? It appears that he did, yes. An interception by Tennessee. Jim Watts of Jacksonville, Florida, number 26, intercepts. And Tennessee takes over. Alabama with two turnovers, Tennessee won. Mrs. Wheeler coming down the field. It was the fake of the inside belly play that Duffy's been talking about. The ball was underthrown. Watts moves across and makes a fine interception. He was trying to pull loose, drop the ball, but he was obviously down before he did drop it. And Tennessee, the volunteers who have tied the score 21 all, have a first and 10 at the 12. The Battle of the South. Mm. Holloway, the quarterback. Bill Rudder, who's becoming uh, very important here in the second half. As quick as Alabama's defensive players are, uh, Rudder's only about three and a half yards from the line of scrimmage. Stand back to tailback's about six and a half yards back, and uh, that first man gets there just a whole lot quicker. Uh, this game has everything, fellas. It does, doesn't it? Running, passing, excitement, interceptions. Second down and six now from the 16, Tennessee. Haskell Stanback of Kannapolis, North Carolina, carrying it for Tennessee. It appears that he's across the 20, just short of a Tennessee first down. Mike Raines, Chuck Strickland on the tackle. There you see third down, less than a yard. Hope you're enjoying it wherever you are, whether it's a Manhattan apartment, a farm in Oklahoma, or a ranch in Texas, wherever. Alabama's defense there when it was needed. Fourth down. They took the gamble and it worked. They were playing run all the way and see went into the power eye, which is supposed to give you extra blocking, but uh, it was really some close. We're going to have a measurement. Uh, I don't think he made it, but it was a slow hitting play. They handed it to the tailback and it developed too slowly. John Kroll was very prominent defensively, number 83. And here's the measurement. It is fourth down. Fourth down. Score tied. 12-19 to go in the game. It's 21 all. I'm getting quite good in that hindsight department, bud. Well, it uh, gives you a little bit of uh, confidence. Claybo is really an outstanding punter, and when you've got to punt, Robin Clary is in single safety for Alabama. Here's Claybo's kick. There's Carey at the 36. <laughs> 64 yards. And throwing the block was John Crow. Touchdown, Alabama. Well, it's one of the most exciting 
Saturday afternoons or evenings I've ever spent, but this is our eighth year of NCAA football. And as Duffy just mentioned a moment ago, it has everything, including a punt return, a 44-yard kick, a 64-yard six-pointer. Beautiful blocking by the entire Alabama team as Davis kicks it up and good. Now, Alabama has regained the lead 28-21 with 11 minutes and 53 seconds remaining in the game. The great one presents... The great entertainers from General Electric. What value? A selection of 100% solid state color sets in a multitude of screen sizes. You get brilliant performance. And the brightest, sharpest pictures in GE history. I demand value for my hard-earned inheritance. I'm having Mother put a GE in every room of my villa. <laughs> General Electric Television, the great entertainer. The House of Windsor invites you to try a better 15-cent cigar. I, um... Oh, go ahead, try one. You know something? This really is a better cigar. Yes, House of Windsor really is a better 15 cent cigar. And now a dazzling punt return, bud. They're all team plays. Terry makes a great move here to give himself some room. And there's another tackle he slipped. But now watch the Alabama defense block for him. They came all the way back. And now watch the toys that he has. And look at this great block. That was King. And here's the kick following the lead touchdown. Paul Carruthers has it for Tennessee and a good run back out to about the 30. Alabama's in the lead, 28-21, 11.47 to go in this classic. You don't know uh, when that dam is going to break again. Each time that ball is snapped, I've got a feeling something sensational is going to happen. Now Holloway, the Tennessee quarterback, he has passed for two touchdowns. He has run for a touchdown. Mr. Everything. He'll try to now move it from the 30-yard line. Here he is through the air. Complete at the 45. First down, Tennessee. Emin Love, number 85. A great end who had caught two touchdown passes coming into the game. Got it. Love uh, moving off the line of scrimmage. Uh, Holloway made an inside fake, but not too good a running fake. Love is running the curl pattern, and Holloway drills it to him. First down, Tennessee. But you can't give him that much time back there. He'll either kill you running or passing. Now Yarbrough is set to the far side of the field on a first and 10 from their own 46. Tennessee with the ball, trailing 28-21. In the Alabama territory to the 49 on a leaping carry, Paul Carruthers from Lafayette, Georgia. Prudential College scoreboard follows this telecast where Merle Harmon and Dave Diles will bring you up to date on all the scores, followed by Wide World of Sports. Muhammad Ali, Rudy Lubers on a fight via satellite from Jakarta, Indonesia, and the controversial 500 stock car race from Charlotte. Tennessee have advanced the ball to the 41 of Alabama. Tom Fitzpatrick, there, it, there he is, number 81. Got a pass. And great success uh, all afternoon. Uh, with the against the grain pass. The Alabama defense is so mobile, they react so rapidly that they go with the first fake, and it's hard for them to get back when the pass goes against the grain. Well, the very first snap of the ball game was an 80-yard touchdown by Alabama. You've had everything today. Holloway pitching it out on a first and 10 play. That's a member of the Tennessee band. And Mike DeBose made a great play. He refused to be faked by Holloway and then made a clean tackle. You know, we talk about Alabama using a lot of running backs. Well, Holloway today has thrown to seven different receivers. Pretty good depth on uh, the receiver core for Alabama. Yes. There's his statistics. Most impressive. Great athlete. Second and ten. Here's Holloway. A gain of two yards. David Watkins from Rome, Georgia, number 93, in on the play. That was crucial because had he not made that tackle, Holloway would have gone for a first down. 
So it brings up third down and eight here at Legion Field. With much love going downfield here, and you can see he's hit very, very hard by number 54. Then he gets hit by another linebacker, and uh, he couldn't get downfield, so Holloway had no chance, and he's sacked. Mike DeBose, there he is, number 54, sacked the quarterback. In a widespread formation on third down, it's the second sacking of the quarterback today by Alabama, and it's a punning situation, bud, yeah, for the very, volunteers. Very key defensive play. Uh, that's the only defense against a player of Holloway's scrambling ability. You've got to get to him by plugging a, li plugging a linebacker, getting somebody there to him. There's Bill Battle, the coach of Tennessee, and here's his punter, Neil Clabo. The last time they punted, a boy named Curry went 64 yards with the punt for a score, and there he is again calling for a fair catch. That was a pretty good act. 50 yards. So the Crimson Tide leading 28 to 21 on a 64-yard punt return by Curry will snap it soon. Texaco is proud to introduce a fantastic new mileage ingredient. You. Yes, you. Because during the energy shortage, you want to conserve gasoline. And the way you drive can do more to give you better mileage than any additive ever could. For example, gradual stops and easy starts can save you up to two miles per gallon in city traffic. So take it easy. Avoid jackrabbit starts. Driving at 50 instead of 70 can mean about a 25% saving the scenery better. If you make sure your air conditioner is off when you don't need it, you can get up to 10% more miles to the gallon. And badly underinflated tires can also cut down on your mileage. So remember, watch the way you drive. You're the best mileage ingredient you can put in your car, and you don't cost a penny extra. When Tennessee are meeting where both teams are undefeated. Five victories each. It was tied until a moment ago when a boy named Kerry of Alabama took a Tennessee punt 64 yards for a touchdown. Alabama leads 28-21, 8.52 left in the game following a Tennessee punt. Alabama now, first and 10 at the 20. Rutledge is the quarterback. Wheeler, 82 to the near side. Jackson Kerry. He may go 80 yards and score. That is 80 yards. Wilbur Jackson, touchdown. He is some ball carrier. Big, fast. That's his second touchdown today, but that was a beauty. First snap again, 80 yards. That was an old-fashioned sweep play, a handoff from the quarterback with a fullback and right halfback leading him, bud. The longest run for a touchdown ever against Tennessee in a series that dates back to 1901. What a game, Duffy. That freshness of the backs is telling off now. It's paying off. It's telling. Bill Davis ups the count. 35-21. 56 points scored, and we have 8 minutes and 34 seconds left in this southern shootout. Let's see it again, bud. The wishbone formation. Normally, it's a reading type play where you fake to the fullback, but this is just the straight single wing, old fashioned type sweep. And this is an outstanding job of ball carrying. And watch the superior speed that Jackson has. He simply outruns the Tennessee defense. Bud, you know, about five or six years ago, uh, Jackson would probably have been playing for Michigan State. Listen to this for a dominant Alabama crowd. Imagine the Alabama and Tennessee fans watching this telecast. Well, we hope you're all enjoying it. It's been a whale of an afternoon, and we're going to need a rest after this game, bud. Well, Tennessee was behind 14-0 uh, uh, in the first quarter, and they came back. Uh, maybe they can do it again. All right, 8.34 to go. Tennessee is going to bring it out of the end zone. Stanley Morgan. Lusty. Breaks away. Look at that desire. This ball. Alabama gets it.
Walter. He was pretty deep in the end zone to bring that one out. Uh, he did give it a great effort. The boy that ran the punt back 64 yards for a touchdown has recovered the fumble for the Crimson Tide. Let's watch it again. You can see he's five yards deep in the end zone. He tries to make a move and is hit very hard. Slides off. There's that second effort, but there pops the ball, and Carey is on it for the Crimson Tide. They talk about ping pong being back and forth. <laughs> this game is unbelievable. Paul Spevy, number 24, goes 19 yards, first and goal, tied. That's that first option, bud, the handoff to the fullback. Very effective. You know, we mentioned a colleague, Lindsey Nelson, whose daughter is uh, in the mascot suit for Tennessee. I can think of an Alabama graduate, another colleague, Mel Allen, that must be eating this up wherever he is. You bet he is. He's enjoying it. All right, first and goal now from the three. Randy Billingsley. I don't know the meaning of do anything except full speed, Tennessee or Alabama. I can empathize with Bill Battle and the Tennessee staff and players because they've played a wonderful game today. And oh, it yes. just seems like the roof has fallen in here the last couple of minutes. And Duffy, they came into the game uh, with two or three players injured that they'd certainly like to have about now. Second down and goal for the Crimson Tide. 7.26 to go in the game. That was Randy Billingsley. Well, they hang tough. <laughs> an 80-yard touchdown pass, a 64-yard punt return, an 80-yard run from scrimmage. We've had everything today, bud. And that's the balance of the Alabama backfield. Uh, everybody in it is a great ball carrier. Jackson, uh, of course, uh, having a great day today, but... Uh, all of them dangerous with the ball anytime they get it. And now credit to the Tennessee defense. They've yeah. kept them at the three. This is the third snap, third down, goal to go. But going in was Spivey, number 24, the senior from Montgomery, Alabama. Steve Patterson from Omaha, Nebraska, the quick guard, helped open the hole. 40 to 21, but. Let's watch it again from the end zone camera. He simply comes back against the grain as we get an excellent block by number 73 of Alabama. It's Zubinski, and the kick is good. Bill Davis has been perfect with the extra point conversions. It's now 42-21. Unbelievable. Life is filled with little bumps. But General Motors cars for 1974 face up to them beautifully. This Chevelle Laguna Type S3 from Chevrolet has a resilient front end that resists minor dents and dings. The GM energy absorbing bumper on this 1974 Buick can take little bumps like this. And Pontiac's Grand Am has a squeezable nose you just won't believe. This new Oldsmobile has a hinged grill that swings back when the bumper gets bumped. And this 1974 Cadillac's bumper and grill move back and forth together upon minor impact. As you can see, General Motors builds bumper systems to look good and at the same time help protect your investment. And that goes for the rear as well as the front. We want you to drive what you like and like what you drive. Would you believe that Alabama now leads 42 to 21 when only moments ago the score was tied at 21 all but it just shows the power the depth of the Crimson Tide and wouldn't it be great bud to see them play Ohio State see them play Oklahoma see them play anybody they're playing a powerful team in Tennessee Tennessee coming from behind to tie it and now it's Carruthers bringing back the kick he is down at the 16. 18-yard return, and Converts Holloway, who is quarterback Tennessee today, will be coming in there as Lefty Perry is in on the tackle. He's from Hazel Green, Alabama. Uh, Chris, when I mentioned that Jackson would have probably been a Michigan State about five years ago, uh, I think it's great that these 
fine, great black athletes can play at any school in the country now, but we used to, every year, Bud, take four or five of the greatest athletes, the black athletes out of the South, and that certainly has hurt our football in recent years. And when they stay at home and play, it uh, adds a great deal of speed and uh, versatility to the offense. You just saw the man from Fordyce, Arkansas, Paul Bear Bryant, as Bill Battles, Tennessee Volunteers, with a first and 10 at the 16, Holloway. John Crow, number 83, and Randy Hall, 62. Hall is from Huntsville, and so is the man they tackled, Condridge Holloway. These Alabama fans uh, almost really believe that Coach Paul Bear Bryant can walk on the water, and I'm almost beginning to believe them. Well, I don't know whether Sook Jordan believes it or not. <laughs> All right, now second down and 17 for the Tennessee Volunteers. Holloway. Throwing long. Boy, it was in the air. John Yarbrough was the intended receiver. 55 yards in the air. And there is Jackson, number 80. And Missouri still rolling along, leading Oklahoma State, 7 to nothing. Jackson, there is a good look at him, who has two touchdowns today, one an 80-yard run. He has 148 yards on 12 carries. So now it's a third down and 17 for the Volunteers. They just come from everywhere. Those Alabama defenders. 57 was flying through there who made the hard hit Conley Duncan. Just nothing like being fresh. If uh, you can have everybody fresh all of the time, you get that total all out effort all of the time. We gotta praise Tennessee all we can because they've played a great game, but their punter, five punts, he is averaging 49 and a half yards. And there he is at the bottom of your screen, number 44. Robin Carey is deep. He ran a punt back 64 yards for a touchdown. There he is. Not this time. Good kick coverage by the Volunteers. A 54-yard punt by Clabo. Fitzpatrick on the tackle. And a reminder that the Provincial College scoreboard follows. Then Wide World of Sports, Muhammad Ali, Rudy Lubbers, the fight from Jakarta, Indonesia, and the controversial 500 stock car race from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. Now leading 42 to 21 with about five minutes to go. It's Richard Todd quarterbacking Alabama from the 31. And the sophomore has desire. Eddie Brown making the tackle. Also got ability. <laughs> Hasn't he got a lot of talent? Bear <laughs> thinks he'll be better than Joe Namath or all the Scott Hunter, all the great ones at Alabama. 6'2", 210, 4'6", speed, 40 yards. Uh, Chris, they tell the story a few years ago after one of Bear's great winning seasons that he was out fishing with his rival coach from Auburn, Shook Jordan. And I'll tell you about it just as soon as we get a chance. All right. First and 10 now from the 42. Uh, well, here we had these two great coaches out fishing and they got about 50 yards from shore and Shook Jordan says, oh, he said, Barry said, I'm going to have to row back to shore because I left my favorite reel on the dock. He said, Bear said, never mind, he said, I'll walk out and get it. He took one step and plunged into the water. He came up sputtering. I'll finish it again after the next play. <laughs> All right, Bear Bryant's team has a second and six on the 46, leading 42-21, coming up to the four minute mark. Ellis Beck, that senior fullback. You got Bryant uh, in the water, coming up sputtering, Duff. Yeah. Well, well, he was sputtering and Shug pulled him into the boat and Bear said, oh, he said, heaven's sake, Shug, he said, don't tell those Alabama people that I can't walk in the water. He said, I won't, Bear, if you don't tell the Auburn people that I pulled you out. <laughs> All right, Duffy Doherty. All right, don't forget last week, the Chevrolet Scholarship winners were on offense, Steve Davis of Oklahoma, and on defense, Lucius Selman of the Sooners. Who will it be today? Well, only Duffy Doherty and Bud Wilkinson know. They'll tell you after a while. We had a shift. Uh, penalty, which is a five yarder. So it'll be a second down and 11 as the ball comes back to the 41. Alabama leads 42 21. Four minutes to go in the game. Richard Todd. 
You know, very often today, a sophomore named Danny Ridgeway would run onto the field, bring the play, and then leave it immediately. So he probably has as much yardage as anybody. We'll see yeah. if we can spot him from time to time. He wears number 10 on the crimson jersey. He's getting shape for the cross country team. Right. So it's a third down and six now for the Crimson Tide. Who led at halftime 21 14. They were tied in the third quarter, but now lead 42 21. Back. Touchdown scored by Wheeler, two by Jackson, Shelby, Carey, Spivy. Tennessee, Yarbrough, Holloway, and Gravitt. The 70, Pulliam, the defensive tackle for Tennessee, is hit very hard by Brown, but he bounces off, retreats, makes a shoestring tackle. So it's an Alabama first down at the 42 of Tennessee. Alabama ranked number two by the polls in the country behind Ohio State. Duffy and Bud had their own rankings at the beginning. Duffy, you had Oklahoma number one, right? I did. I'm, I may have to do a lot of thinking between now and next How week. How about you, Bud? What team did you have on top? Well, Southern California is still the defending national champion. And, and they're speaking of that. And we get them next week against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Look at that. Over 800 yards. Total offense. Both teams. 63. Total points. 224 to go. Second and nine. Alabama. The leader. Beautiful faking. Beautiful faking. Uh, speaking about next week's game, Southern Cal and Notre Dame, Notre Dame hasn't beaten Southern Cal in the last seven meetings. They have two ties and five losses, and I'm sure that Air would like to have the Irish change that trend a little bit, bud. That's an understatement. <laughs> so would all of the well, Notre Dame alumni. It'll be nice to get all our ABC crew back in Indiana that's blushing with color those great trees we have back there and it's going to be a great game uh, one of the old traditional rivalries of college football just like this one and will be just as hotly contested third down and four and Todd the sophomore quarterback <laughs> he has desire and Bud said talent as well hey, I'm pleased that Bear Bryant waited until after I got out of coaching before he made that a hundred thousand dollar contribution to his alma mater and to the school where he's coaching that may set a very dangerous precedent for other college coaches around the country. I doubt it, Jeff, because they're very few. Well, there you see some of the equipment beneath the crimson jersey. And coming up on Wide World of Sports, don't forget the 12-round heavyweight bout between Muhammad Ali and Rudy Lubbers from Jakarta and the 500 stock car race from Charlotte Motor Speedway where there was controversy galore. That's at 5 Eastern and Pacific or Central Time, preceded, of course, by... Prudential College scoreboard. Oh boy. Let's watch the line as they fire out here. We're going to be right on the line and let's take a look now at how Alabama moves as the ball moves. That whole team moves right together and that's what it takes to establish a running attack. Richard Todd had to go over and get a new Crimson jersey, number 14. He's doing that right now while Alabama's Wilbur Jackson called the timeout. It'll be a fourth down. And uh, less than one is the ball is in Tennessee territory with Alabama leading 42-21 on a flawless autumn afternoon in Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back. Tom Terry, warehouser forest scientist. His job, know as much as possible about forest soils. Nutrients, moisture, composition. Determine whether fertilizer is needed and when it should be applied. He covers a lot of ground, from testing soils in the rough and tumble backwoods of North Carolina to excavations in the thriving forest. Weyerhaeuser is spending millions of dollars to understand soils and tree growth so we can keep our own forests green and growing forever like these fast-growing loblolly pines that have sprung up to 12 feet in just four short years. It's a tough, demanding job for a forester like Tom Terry, particularly when you take your work home with you every night. Weyerhaeuser, the tree-growing company. Minute 22 left in the game. Fourth down and less than a yard. Alabama goes for it, leading 42-21. Todd does it. And all of us associated in football and in sports were saddened yesterday by the untimely death 
of the former commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, Tonto Coleman. A great man who made a tremendous contribution to college athletics and particularly to college athletics in the Southeast. Soto and Coleman and all the Coleman family members are deepest sympathy. First and 10 now from the 30 for Alabama. Spectacular performance by a team ranked number two, undefeated coming into this game, having defeated California, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, Georgia, and Florida. And there, bud, are your winners. And I'm sure that uh, many people uh, perhaps thought that Conrad Holloway uh, should be the offensive player of the game. He's had a sensational afternoon for Tennessee, but uh, Alabama has won this football game, and uh, Brown was a key factor and made the big play that put the icing on the cake. And of course, the game was tied at 21 all through the third quarter. But then Alabama, with a couple of spectacular plays, including an 80 yard run from scrimmage and a 64 yard punt return, busted it wide open. But I think that Tennessee will win a lot of football games as the season progresses and, and unquestionably wind up in a bowl game. Listen to this, bud. Alabama snapped the ball 72 times. They churned out 23 first downs, scored 42 points, and made their legions happy here at Legion Field. And their entire squad uh, plays in the games. They're so deep everywhere, and everybody is fresh all of the time, and that puts great morale on the football team when everybody gets to play in the games. I want to take it back. I said we have had everything in this game. We haven't had a field goal yet. That one attempt. Unsuccessful. Danny Ridgeway, the man that's been bringing in the plays, and I think it's very benevolent of Bear Bryant to let him have the ball. Number 10 on the last play of the game at a resounding, and Bear is has enough players to carry him off the field. You can count on it. There it is, 42-21, and Bear Bryant has just coached his 226th victory in years at Maryland, Kentucky, Texas A&M, and Alabama, bud. And Bear has had uh, one of the great careers of anyone in coaching. He seems to adjust with the times. He changes his football. He changes the relationships, patterns with players. And uh, no matter what the rules are, substitution-wise or anything else, Bears teams are always there, ready, and play superior football. The native of Fordyce, Arkansas, the home also of Larry Lacewell, who's a great defensive coach at yeah. Oklahoma. Uh, you know that Bear got that nickname, Bear, uh, but I'm sure you know it, and Chris, you probably know it, because as a youngster out of four days at the age of 16, he wrestled a bear that was with a traveling carnival. I believe it. Did he win? I think he must have won. They just paid him that $100,000 prize that he got. That's what he used to pay off the University of Alabama. He might have had the winnings out of interest for all that time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget for all the scores, highlights of the game, Merle Harmon and Dave Diles are back in New York City to bring you our network show, Prudential College Scoreboard, and that'll be followed by ABC's Wide World of Sports. It'll be Muhammad Ali going against uh, Rudy Lubbers. Right now, we'd like to tell you that the executive producer of NCAA football is Rune Arledge. Today's coverage of the Tennessee-Alabama game was produced by Chuck Howard, directed by Andrew Sedaris, technical director John Allen. Coming up next, the Prudential College scoreboard, and don't forget tomorrow, it's College Football 73 with highlights of other games today. ABC's Wide World of Sports follows later today. Ali Luber's fight via satellite from Indonesia, and the national and controversial 500 stock car race from Charlotte. Five Eastern and Pacific, four Central. Our thanks to our spotter, Bill Friel, and statistician Terry O'Neill, who had a busy afternoon. Chris Shankel speaking for Bud Wilkinson, Duffy Doherty from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. Air travel arranged through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines chosen for travel by more sports teams than any other airline. NCAA football, Tennessee, Alabama has been brought to you by Warehouser, the tree growing company for lumber, plywood, paper, packaging, and thousands of other products from wood. By Texaco and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. By Chevrolet, building a better way to see the USA. 
and by United States Tobacco Company, House of Windsor, a better 15 cent cigar. The preceding was a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.